Hello everyone on the interwebs. My name is Coltec and today we're going to be watching a StarCraft 2 Heart of the Swarm replay between our very own blue Kronos in the upper left corner of the map, hailing from Sweden, playing for Team Fnatic. It is Sase versus our very own Red Zerg in the bottom right corner of the map, playing for Team Ends. That's with an E, a no, double E actually, Ends. Hailing from Finland, the northern countries up above, or west or east or wherever you are, it is Sural. Now the map is indeed Belshir Vestige, and this matchup, I'm actually kind of looking forward uh, for this matchup, because uh, Sase, we all know that he's a very good player, like a very good player, but I hope that we can see a lot of things from Sural, or Seral, or Cyril, or... Whatever you pronounce, I'm just going to pronounce this Seral. Like I said, the map is Belshir Vestige. Quite the, the the map, I have to say. Quite the map. You have a kind of a weirdly positioned expansion, especially with the wide area in front of it. And it can just lead to great, great battles. It's all about positioning, defender's positioning, and attacker's positioning. Because if you are defending, and the opponent's attacking from one, from one or, two, or two sides, then you can defend it quite easily, but if you're um, if, but you have to be defending from up top. But if he's attacking from three sides, then it's pretty much impossible. I mean, it depends on how you do it. If you give him any sort of space to actually do something like this, then it's over. You need to keep him on the ramp, so there's not much space, not many units attacking. Now, in terms of attack paths, so there are kind of three attack paths you can take from. In the middle, in the early game, you cannot take this one. You cannot. It's just too much waste of a time, and you cannot go around the watchtowers. That's also a big waste of time too. And you won't do any sort of pressure if you go around. You can only go around the watchtower, but then it doesn't make that big of a difference, does it? Because he sees it. What can you do? Nothing. But in the mid to late game, you can just destroy these rocks, have a quicker attack path, and just go. Or you could go. We can also go on the watchtower. We can go around the watchtower, which, if you're not controlling it, and you know the uh, the opponent is, and you want to have the element of surprise when attacking, then going around it is great, fantastic. But if you do control the watchtowers, then there is no point in actually going around, unless you want to snipe one of the expansions. Now we're seeing a pretty basic build from both players, at least from what I could see from the production tab. We see that Sorrel had a kind of a 15 pool. 15 hatch, 17 gas, 17 overall, and that type of dealie. He, he just went for spawning pool first, which is nice versus Protoss. It is really typical. You have some sort of a defense early on. You can kind of get the larva, the, the spawning larva going on with the queen. But for the Protoss player, we're actually seeing kind of a defense here with the Zealot, but the Zerglings managed to go around and get in without any sort of troubles whatsoever. Now, he is going for the double gas, he already has uh, propanol gas, so he's going for something really heavy on gas early on. Not a full on target because he already has three gateways, but he could go in for something like a like a blink tactic or a twilight console thing. Oh, but it seems to be a four gate safe expand going on for Sase. Quite ingenious, I have to say. Quite ingenious. Yeah, you could just fit a zealot in there and just block the entrance off, no problemo. Now, Saral getting that zergling speed right off the bat, getting those injects on without any sort of problem, getting the the creep spread on. I'm not sure if that is kind of a great call. It's actually a good call. You want to get that creep spread on just for scouting and movement, just better engagements in general, especially for defending. It's really good. If you're attacking, even better. Well, not so sure about that now that I said it. Now we're seeing a pretty basic one, one, what is it? One mothership core and what? Two stalkers? One stalker, one zealot. Exactly, one mothership core and one stalker, one zealot. Progression here from Sase, but I think that Sarah is going to be able to defend it just not so. I'm actually curious whether or not he'll be able to do it. He needs to make some zerglings pronto. Waiting for those roaches is not going to do anything. He's not going to be able to defend. It is four gateways producing, always, always producing sentry zealots 
and stonkers and he's not gonna be able to do anything and now the attacks coming he's gonna be like oh I'm not gonna defend against this he just uh, he doesn't he doesn't even know I know he certainly does know now and he is just panicking he cannot defend against this whatsoever the time warp here and the force field are just amazing from Sase. They can just contain him while the time warp kind of slow them down to actually allow him to do the time warp. Even if even if those five roaches pop out, they're not going to be able to do anything. Of course, those drones could do something, but not much. That queen might actually be able to, to actually get out. But if it does get out, what will it do? Absolutely nothing. Now the roaches, they're all getting sniped. For they even doing damage. The force field here was just amazing. They contained the roaches while the zealots just went there and just stabbed them. Just like butter with a hatchet, a an axe, pretty much. A chainsaw. That was the word I wanted for the chainsaw. Now the zealots are all dead, are pretty much all dead, but then again, there are just a stalker okay, there are the zealots are not dead whatsoever. Oh they're lord and G! From Sural, not even GG, just G from Sural. Even despite that attack, the the supply was about even. I think that was all because of drones. No, oh, actually the, the army supply was pretty much even. But still, it was just this really good aggression early on from Sase. And Sural was just too committed in the, in the economy to actually be able to make units in time to actually just... To just defend against the pressure that Sansa had, which is a safe foregate. And it just worked on so many levels. Even if he couldn't uh, fully destroy his base or cause a defeat, he just knew he had the economic advantage and the army advantage and the technological advantage. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.